You're listening to the Really Useful Podcast. It is the tech podcast for technophobes from Make Use Of. My name is Christian Corley. Uh, now, if you listen to the last show, you will have encountered me largely hosting things on my own with a few contributions from my Make Use Of colleagues and find myself chuckling at length when certain smart assistants decided to join in with the podcast. Hopefully that won't happen this week. I have a smart assistant. It's Gavin Phillips. Hello, Gavin. Hey, Christian. How are you doing? I'm well. And yourself? Yeah, very well, yeah. Enjoying the beautiful Cornish sunshine today, actually. It's a jolly nice day down here. Yeah, it's a nice day here in the northeast of the UK as well. Now, um, as you may have gathered from the title of this week's podcast, we are looking at at things that will help you in the event of self-isolation, enforced remote working. This is initially uh, inspired by the current spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus. But, you know, the tips that we have here are they're they're longer term. They can be used in any self-isolation or remote working uh, scenario. So we're going to be looking at some tips and tricks for doing that Uh, we're going to look at some news first and we've also got some giveaways to mention that we'll make use of at the moment we're going to kick off with some news related to COVID-19 NVIDIA the computer game chip and lastly game streaming service company are calling on gaming PC owners to put the systems to work fighting COVID-19 using the folding at home application and now this is interesting that this comes along now, as it's only been a few weeks where the uh, similar project for searching uh, life, extraterrestrial life in space has come to an end. What happens is you use the application and you use spare clock cycles toward advancing humanity's scientific knowledge of coronavirus. Have you ever used a tool like this, Gavin? Uh, I actually signed up to the uh, the SETI program one when that was up and running um, right. years ago. and gave some of my cpu over to it every now and then mainly when i remember to turn it on so it wasn't all that that often I, I must admit but if you are contributing something towards a greater good like that and, and you can do it as easily as leaving your computer on overnight you know you're going to be away from it for at least you know six eight twelve hours and it could make a big difference in the long run so it's well worth doing if you can yeah absolutely now it's not a new project folding at home has been around for years Uh, You could find it on the PS3 a few years ago. A new group of projects, including SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes uh, COVID-19, and the related SARS-CoV virus were made available on the surface earlier this week. Now, if you want to do something to help, then installing this software on your computer and leaving it running can contribute to that using uh, cloud computing for research, basically. You'll find the link to that and everything else that we discuss in this week's really useful podcast in the show notes. And uh, reacting to news that people will be at home, enforced or voluntarily over the coming weeks, Disney has brought Frozen 2 to Disney Plus three months early. So that's um, I mean, it basically gives you something to watch on Disney Plus. Also, it's a bit of a, if you haven't already signed up to Disney Plus, then there's the opportunity you miss Frozen 2 or you just want to watch it again ad infinitum. Subscribe to Disney Plus now rather than in three months' time and watch it. It's a good uh, good play by Disney, isn't it? It's something yeah. that's very nice for all the families that are inevitably going to be stuck at home during this. It's a great piece of marketing for them Absolutely. as well. Um, and there's probably a lot of families that didn't didn't catch it at the cinema first time round, despite its massive popularity. I think it became the biggest animated film of all time. Um, so if you haven't seen it, it's going to be on your screens in your home in the next few weeks, and you can learn all of the songs to go along with it if you hadn't already forgotten the ones from the first Frozen film, which my kids still sing. So. Wow. The ones from Frozen 2 haven't quite caught on in the same way. So, Yes, uh, I haven't seen Frozen 2, but I've heard plenty of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to get a right earful, I guess, when you start watching that at home with your guys. <laughs> yeah, I'll just put my headphones on. <laughs> listen to some blues music. So I wonder if uh, any other 
streaming providers will follow suit with that. I, I guess we'll see over the coming days. You may by the time this goes live, there could be more stuff going dropping early. Yeah, absolutely. There are other services that are making changes uh, like Disney, not bringing stuff forward, but um, Pokemon Go, for instance, which you know requires you to be out of the house and searching for for Pokemon everywhere. The Niantic, the developers of Pokemon Go, are making changes to make sure that everybody can still continue playing within their own home so they won't lose any of their progress <laughs> within the game they'll still be able to access the poker stops and and what have you um without having to break isolation if that's what's going on so it's good that tech companies are stepping up and, and creating alternatives for people really yeah absolutely absolutely and uh, msi the computer hardware manufacturer have extended warranties in response to coronavirus the warranty applies to desktop and all-in-one pcs motherboards monitors and computer cases so it's offering a free two-month warranty extension to customers who own an eligible product with a warranty that was due to expire this month in response to the health emergency that is global coronavirus the epidemic has taken the world by surprise with its infectiousness, MSI says. Due to this outbreak, life has been disrupted in many parts of the world and fresh cases and tragic deaths have been reported with every passing day. So they're basically putting customers first and ensuring that their warranties don't run out while they're unable to deal with any issues. Uh, good step. I'm, I'd be surprised if some of MSI's competitors don't follow suit, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I think once one company does it the others are going to have to follow suit or else they're going to look not altogether pleasant in comparison <laughs> um but i know other companies not uh, competitors with msi um i was going to talk about american isps um are have announced that they're going to postpone overcharge payments late fees and termination of of services uh, to keep people connected and those isps include at&t charter CenturyLink, comcast t-mobile verizon sprint and cox so if you're on one of those isps and you are suffering um they have announced yeah that they're not gonna suddenly cut you off and cut off that vital lifeline so that's that's a positive as well Okay, so we're going to move on to give you some tips and tricks for home and remote working now. If you have been forced to work from home or you've decided to make that decision to um, uh, avoid contact with people that you work with during the, any kind of infectious outbreak, it's good to know what you're doing before you start. Working from home is not an easy step to take, whether or not it's a plan for the rest of your life or the rest of your immediate career or whether it is an enforced decision i've been working from home since 2010 and i'll be honest with you when i first started it was surprisingly simple as long as i had a schedule to stick to as soon as uh, the children came along it became a lot tougher i think you'd probably agree with that gavin yeah absolutely um but I've always had uh, kids in my working from home life, but I've actually added to the amount of children I have, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> it has presented difficulties, especially in our living situation in, a, in our previous house where there was no, I had no dedicated space to go to. I was sitting on the dining room table basically with my computer and what have you and the kids would be in and out of the room running around if we ever had guests over or what have you I'd have to clear all my stuff off the table and you know it's just a nightmare so yeah working from home presents a whole set of issues that you might not be ready for but there are a lot of ways you can get around them aren't there Christian? Absolutely having a good preparation is important it's a good idea to spend an hour just planning exactly how you're going to approach working from home. Uh, obviously, it depends on how you're going to do it and it depends on your circumstances. But assuming that you're going home on Friday and you start working from home on the Monday, make sure you've got everything that you need. Uh, you could say there are four strategies for remote work. The first one is to create a safe and effective foundation for remote digital access. So make sure you've got Internet access at home. Ensure you've got suitable devices for remote work. You've got the access to connect to any servers that you might need to use. 
and a webcam for web conferencing with your colleagues, a good quality headset or headphones with a microphone. Ensure that remote access to business assets is um, secure, best on using a VPN. Now, this might be a paid VPN, although more commonly, there's a good chance that it is a VPN that has been set up by your IT department to connect from your computer to work servers. So it might be worth prior to taking the step to working from them, speak to your IT people to ensure that that VPN is set up and available for you to use to securely connect using an encrypted tunnel to your work servers. Working remotely means enhanced collaboration. It means better communication, it means more streamlined communication there's always a time for water cooler conversations and when you're at work it's very easy to just pop out the office door put your head over the cubicle and offer a pithy comment about whatever's been discussed but those discussions are gone when you're working from home and the focus is on maximizing that the time you have alone to get the job done and being available for coordination with other people would you agree with that yeah i think you're right um trying to create a sense of community if you are very used to the, the office environment that sudden change is difficult but the discipline of using your time efficiently um i think actually keeps you going going in the long run if you realize that you can sit and do it without having to stop every few minutes um, or that, you know, you, you, you're not having the distractions, the background noise and, and all that sort of stuff that comes with the office environment. You can really, like you said, maximise your time and maybe get more work done than you've ever done before. Yeah. Another thing I would suggest is try and focus particular days on particular types of tasks. So if you have a day where a lot of productivity is required, then focus on getting all those jobs done. For instance, today, as well as doing this podcast, I've got a at least one VPN to write a review for. So there's possibly two VPNs to review. So I will be working pretty much hard car on doing those things. Whereas last week, I was messing around with installing things using Raspberry Pi, putting apps on Android, taking screenshots. So in between those things, I was very uh, naughty and played on my Xbox. Whoa. Yeah. You can't admit that. You can't admit that. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to and, give them the know, good advice. <laughs> it is supposed to be good advice. And this is good advice because the good advice part of this is don't get a false sense of exactly how much time you have to do things. Because yeah. as soon as things like watching TV or playing with the Xbox or playing with an app on your phone that you're not reviewing or taking screenshots off st- starts to take over, then you're losing out with the rest of the time. And the focus is to get the work done and save that stuff for later on. Now, a sidecat Basu at Make Use Of has put together this great guide of how to be productive when working from home. And one of the important things he says here is to set your clock. Now, I use a schedule, but I also set my clock by it. And uh, it's important to make sure you're getting up. It's make sure that you use a calendar to set... Uh, reminders for when you're supposed to be doing things these things are important and also if you're working from home i think this is this is possibly the the productivity kickstarter for working at home is get dressed for work don't yeah. sit in pajamas yeah I, I i can't emphasize that that enough um you know stick to what would be basically a normal routine get out of bed you know grab your breakfast, get in the shower, uh, and as a psychiatrist says, have a shave, do whatever normal routine you do. You know, if you're not going to the office, you know, you, you don't have to dress smart, you don't have to put on a tile or anything, but put on your proper clothes. Do not sit around in your pyjamas because that is a productivity killer. It will destroy yeah. your productivity. It's not the right mindset to approach a day at work and because that's that's what it is you you're still yeah. doing a day at work you know you can't sit around in your pajamas and focus on the task at hand so yeah I, I would completely agree with that even before this podcast I got up got dressed I had a shower Christian can't smell me but I smell great <laughs> I can <laughs> <laughs> and he does 
Uh, okay, yeah, so there there are very much other things you can do. You can put up a do not disturb sign on the office door if that's appropriate. Uh, if you you know if you don't live alone, it's a good mm-hmm. idea. Ensure that the workspace that you're using is comfort comfortable and perfect for what you need it to be. So if you just need to write on a laptop and make the odd video call, then a laptop with a clear table, that should be fine. If you need to access multiple websites or multiple applications at the same time, you might need multiple monitors. You might need other things. You might need a graphics tablet, for instance. So you need space for that to be set up correctly. So ensure you take the time beforehand to find, to, to, to plan your space and where you're putting your papers, where you're putting your laptop or your desktop computer, where you're keeping your phone on charge for calls coming in, that sort of thing. Just be prepared. Preparation is key to all of this, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I would completely agree with that. We're going to uh, move on now to effective tools to make remote working a breeze. Those things that we've looked at, uh, check in the show notes for our tips and tricks for home and remote working. Now, if you are self-isolated, there might be a few things that you find in your downtime that you're bored, but maybe it's better to find something to do. There's tons of things that you could be doing. There really is. So we've basically got a list of things that you can do in self-isolation. Now, Gavin... If you were in self-isolation, what would you be doing after work when the kids are in bed or at the weekend when everyone's in the garden? What are the things that you would be doing to make the best of the time in self-isolation? Well, I've got two things that I would be doing. Um, One of them is, I think, is essential if you are self-isolating, and that's actually keeping fit. Uh, Okay. If you're keeping fit, uh, trying to stay on top of your fitness, working out a bit, you're going to be more mentally astute, a bit sharper, just going to feel a bit more positive and upbeat about the world. If you're sitting around and, you know, moping about, like we were saying a minute ago about being in your pyjamas, it's it's not necessarily the approach you you need if you're going to be stuck indoors, you know. So there's a lot of really good um, apps that you can get completely free uh, on both iOS and Android that will take you through um, workouts and routines and teach you how to do do these uh, exercises properly, you know, how to do a proper press up, how to do a proper sit up, you know. And if that's not your bag, there's also stuff on YouTube that will take you through different routines uh like yoga routines uh, uh, and what have you so anything like that i think is is massively important so the one app i would advise people to go and have a look at is called freeletics it's very popular um all of the routines on there are curated by professionals and they will take you through you can do week by week um fitness programs that will keep you trim and fit during during this period now the second thing i would absolutely love to do a bit more of but i'm not able to is play loads of video games Hmm. Um, because there's a lot of amazing free ones out there as well aren't there yeah uh for instance there is um we've we've just learned that call of duty warzone has been made free Mm. so that's a battle royale game where they've a man for himself or team up and play against others. So, you know, that's an option. I have for many years now been purchasing games on Steam for my retirement. Nice. <laughs> you finally crack into them. You can finally crack into them once self-isolated. Exactly. It's not just Steam either. There's there's all the others. There's Uplay and there's good old games, gob.com. There's all of these services. I've got games. Xbox One, I've got games that I've got using my... Uh, monthly is it is game pass the monthly one uh yeah yeah monthly xbox game pass yeah uh where you get the free games i can't remember if that's game cast game pass or gold it's gold isn't it oh i think i thought they merged them did they or maybe not i think uh, no no they didn't merge them no I well, game regardless i've got my... games on xbox one to play as well and uh you know so and there's probably games on my yeah, yeah there's games of plenty to be playing so that is something you could be doing in, in in self-isolation and as we mentioned with disney plus earlier there's a myriad of 
streaming services that you can subscribe to if you haven't already uh, and start watching or binging or box setting there's there's disney plus there's netflix there's amazon prime there's hulu there's there's britbox which is launched in the us in 2018 i think and is now available in the uk as well full of it's got classic doctor who from 1963 to 1989 on it for a start you know so and they're all the really they're they're the polished dvd blu-ray versions as well they're not the the old uh, slightly wonky bits they've been polished up and they look really nice so those are just some things and there's also you know if you're off work then th- this could be taking a hit on your bank balance so that you might be wanting to find ways to save money or make money now you could cut the cord and you know cutting the cord is a really useful podcast in itself uh, but it's basically the process of quitting cable tv or satellite tv and using your internet connection and your terrestrial connection to enjoy TV. Mm-hmm. Getting your groceries online is going to save you a trip out the house. There are bonuses and bargains to be had. And it's say some petrol or, or public transport fees uh, as well. And you just do some online surveys for money. I've started doing this quite often because I quite like being asked my thoughts on things. <laughs> uh, there's creative things that you could be doing as well. Last, just last week, I found, and I'm not in, even in self-isolation, and there's a lot of black and white photos in my family. I found an app called Remini, which uh, a lot of people I follow on Twitter have been using Remini because it does photos and video. And taking clips of old Doctor Who and you, running them through Remini, also stills from old TV shows. And it, it, it's a wonderful tool that uh, sharpens slightly blurry, old, unsteady photos and footage. Now, in some cases, the results are a little bit oil painty, just Ooh. just just into Uncanny Valley. But um, a lot of the cases, they look grand. I've, there's a photo of my grandfather on Wikipedia, which sounds a lot grander than it is. And <laughs> it's an old black and white photo from Sicily in 1943. And I ran it through Rimini to tidy it up slightly. And then I colorized it using an app called Colorize. But the, the Remini tool is really good. It's worth well worth checking out because it can fix all sorts of problems with old photos. And uh, if you have children, homeschooling might be a topic that you consider looking into. If yeah. I mean, in most cases, I think the schools will pre- be providing plenty of work for children in the case where you're in an area where schools are closing. Isn't that right? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, um, I know... Our local school here in the UK is, is is preparing literature in case in case that happens. But I've seen a few really good uh, Twitter posts and Facebook posts listing the various online um, learning portals there are, like uh, Udemy and uh, the Khan Academy. You know, the list is, is massive, um, and you can find stuff that's tailored towards the age of your kids as well. And that's quite important. You want them to be learning within at least their age bracket to to keep it on topic there's a lot of really good online resources out there there is and they're not just for children as well if you don't have children and you want to do some learning yourself you could be learning new skills learn how to program learning musical instruments learn cake icing or some other kitchen activity there aren't many others that don't involve food i think are you hungry (laughs) most of us know how to wash up i might be slightly yes Uh, (laughs) DIY even and you know you could be using YouTube to help with long standing DIY tasks it's something I do quite often because I am an absolute beginner when it comes to DIY Mm. I spend a lot of time on YouTube looking at how to do things from removing roll plugs to changing light pendants all sorts there's just so much out there so the the period of isolation doesn't have to be boring and actually like you were saying the the time that you have, the downtime that you have, you can put to use in the sort of Google style 80, 20, 80 percent of the time working, 20 percent of the time innovating. And you can use that 20 percent of the time to do incredible stuff. There's all those videos on uh, YouTube as well of the people that learn, learn 24 skills in 24 hours. You don't have to do a mad endurance marathon of learning like that. But if you've got time on your hands, there is a whole world of resources at the end of your fingers. Is that a consecutive 24 hours? The one or one or two videos I've seen is consecutive 24 hours. Yeah, he does it Whoa. throughout a whole 24 hour period. 
and then sort of you know he collapses at the end because he's exhausted. But yeah, yeah, I think enough. some of the skills in there as well. I think he's allocated more time than he needs to. So maybe he's cutting and sleeping as well because mm. he's not on camera for 24 hours so okay. Okay. maybe he's having a five minute power nap every hour so maybe so yeah there's a general idea behind this is make the most of your time you could decorate your home as well that's the other thing mm. any you can think of let us know in the comments share them when we tweet it on uh, twitter where else would you tweet something other than in a tree and basically just let us know by the way if this is something that you're looking at due to being self-isolated due to illness whether it's coronavirus COVID-19 or something else then we do hope you get well soon we're going to move on to some giveaways now and there's a couple running on make use of that you might be interested in we have the creative super x5 air review spatial audio done right it's it's a headset basically uh, very nice that uses headphone holography technology to promise impressive surround sound they're really nice. You, yeah, I've it used sounds... the, um, the 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 Super X5 theaters, which I think are the ones above these, and yeah. I've used the the Air as well, and it is actually quite incredible the way that the sound appears from anywhere. It, it's quite yeah. phenomenal. If you've never experienced holographic sound, is it's, it's it's brilliant. It is amazing, and th- th- these headphones have a micro SD slot as well. Mm. which that that's awesome because you basically take your music with you without having to connect to anything so that's pretty cool head to the in in our show notes click the link and then use the competition entry widget at the end of the review to uh, get as many entries as possible you can enter via email using facebook or using twitter that one will end in around 25 days time so about three weeks we also have a giveaway for the mega mods ps4 controller this is an alternative controller for your PlayStation 4. Enter in the same way. And it's got a great 8 out of 10 rating. So that's worth having if you have a PS4 and if you are fortunate enough to win. That one will end in around two weeks' time. And are you doing any reviews at the moment, Gavin? Uh, I'm not doing any at the moment, no. Um, I must admit I've got a, a router sitting on... Well, it's been plugged in and then taken out again. It's sitting on my desk, and uh, our reviews editor, Mr. James Bruce, is is still waiting for it. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a couple of things that I'm working on at the moment. One of them is the Retro Flag Raspberry Pi case. It's not really a case. It's a, basically it's a Nintendo Game Boy style console controller case with a so you can play games on it raspberry pi zero just slots in the top and uh, so there's review and production for that i've also just reviewed a round of applause please everybody the librem 5 from purism oh, i nice. finally received a review copy of that now that won't be a giveaway that will be a review only uh, unfortunately so that brings us to the end of this week's really useful podcast as ever all the information for the things that we discussed what can be found in the show notes You've been listening to the really useful podcast, the tech podcast for technophobes. My name is Christian Corley. Big thanks to you for listening. And thanks to Gavin Phillips for joining us this week. We'll be back with a new really useful podcast next week. Until then, it's goodbye. And if necessary, get well soon.